Hey everyone, I'm Alan Thrall, and in this video I'm going to be talking about how my opinion of machines has changed a bit over the past few years. I'm also going to use this as an opportunity to talk about my recent strongman competition, California Strongest Man 2023, in which I was able to win first place in the under 200 pound division. In the past, I have explained in depth why free weights, specifically barbells, are far superior to machines. Other than the big three, which movements work best? Which ones are a waste of time? And to be honest, when I see old clips of things I used to say in my YouTube videos, I think that at that time I was really just buying into what people who I held in high regards were teaching, things that they were saying. I was absorbing it like a sponge. I would hear it and say to myself, that sounds good, that sounds convincing, I like that. And then I would just regurgitate that information. Not to say that it was all bad info or that it was harmful information. I just don't agree with everything that I used to believe. And so here I am to tell you that dumbbells, barbells, machines, and bodyweight exercises all have their own advantages and disadvantages. So let's talk about each of those things. Free weights offer a more unstable training environment, which can help recruit more muscle fibers, which is a good thing. And piggybacking off of that, there is some added benefit and improvement in balance when training with free weights. Training for power and explosiveness is also better with free weights because there's less deceleration needed when you're lifting a barbell than if you were lifting with a machine. A more practical advantage, free weights are less expensive than machines, so they're perfect for cellar dwellers or small gym owners. And a more obvious advantage is specificity. If you're training for barbell sports, it's gonna help to have some barbells in your training. With that said, free weights and barbells might be a little more difficult to use because they require more instruction than a machine. Next, if you cannot do a bodyweight squat, meaning a squat with just your body weight, adding free weights or putting a barbell on your back is not going to help the situation. Balance is a limiting factor when training with free weights. And with free weights, it's a little bit easier to cheat the movement and recruit secondary muscle groups to move the weight, like when you turn leg day into back day. Machines. Now, while free weights have the added advantage of an unstable environment, which might help recruit more muscle fibers, machines might offer a better strength curve, meaning there's more mechanical tension on the muscle throughout the entire range of motion. Machines also might allow the user to grind out more reps, getting closer to failure while still targeting the intended muscle group. So for a squat, as you get tired, you might start bending over more and using more back than quads to move the weight. With a dumbbell curl, you might start leaning back more, recruiting more front delt, more swing, more momentum. So a machine can help reinforce strict technique. And finally, machines might be a little bit easier to learn because they don't require very much instruction, which could be appealing and more attractive to a total noob who's lost in the sauce. With that said, machines can be as expensive as a used car, so they're not available to you unless you have a membership to a commercial gym. Like I mentioned earlier, there's no benefit of an unstable environment while you're training, and there's little to no balance component involved. And with regards to specificity, if you want to train for strength sports, you're going to need to train with some free weights. And finally, bodyweight exercises, this is going to be short and sweet. They can be done anywhere at any time with zero equipment. They are all scalable, meaning you can make them easier or more difficult to meet you where you're at. But there are some instances where people are going to get more benefit from free weights or machines because it allows them to get the adequate amount of training volume. Now, with regards to gains, are you going to get more muscle and strength gains from free weights or machines? This has actually been studied, and in summary, there's really no difference between the two. So the good news is you can do one or the other or both. Now, specificity is an important factor to consider based on your goals. Do you want to squat 300 pounds? Do you want to total 1,000 pounds in a powerlifting meet? You're going to need some specific barbell training to help you reach your goals. But that doesn't mean machines can't be used as a helpful tool. So now I want to move away from hypertrophy and general strength and talk more about performance and how machines have helped with my performance. When I was training for California Strongest Man, I utilized more machine work than I ever have in any competition prep before. And here's two reasons why I think machines were helpful. Number one, fatigue management. Typically I train all five strongman events on top of squats and deadlifts and barbell strict press and barbell push press and a bunch of other assistance exercises. This can be a lot to handle, and admittedly, I have a hard time putting those big main barbell movements on the back burner. So I had to sit down and have a hard talk with myself and realize that there is no squat event in California Strongest Man this year. There is no deadlift event in California Strongest Man this year. So why am I prioritizing these movements? And I think the reason is I am attached to those numbers, those squat and deadlift numbers. Not too attached, but I am sort of attached to those numbers and I don't want to see them dwindle down or I don't want to put them on the back burner. So I continue to prioritize it all the time. And while I am in pretty good shape and I can handle a lot of training volume, I think that it was 
I, I have been guilty of doing too much. And I was starting to see my squat and deadlift training interfere with my event training. That's not to say that all I need to do is train events, but it was having a negative impact on the things that actually matter for this upcoming competition. Enter machines. So I started using machines and I asked myself, why are you squatting? There's a reason why I'm squatting, but why am I doing it? I was squatting to try to get my legs tired to try to increase my leg endurance threshold. Improving those two things meant that I was not going to get tired in a 60 second tire flip event, no pun intended. And in the big picture, I wanted to be able to last all five events competing all day. I wanted fresh legs, strong legs that would last an entire day of competing. I didn't want to get to event four and event five and say, I'm dead. I've got nothing left to give. I didn't need to PR my squat numbers because I'm not training for a powerlifting meet. So I decided that I would tire out my legs on leg press or my favorite hack squat, sometimes even leg extensions and leg curls. I would do high rep sets, 15 to 20 reps, or sometimes I'd just do 60 seconds, no prescribed reps. I would just do as many reps as I could in 60 seconds to mimic a 60 second strongman event. And I could do these really high rep sets, get really tired, but feel fine the next day. If I did sets of 15 to 20 reps on squats or I squatted for 60 seconds straight, it would probably generate a lot more fatigue than I would like. So machines help me maintain a lot of volume and intensity with less fatigue than compound free weight movements. Is this anecdotal, just my opinion and bro sciency? Yes, but fatigue and soreness is kind of subjective too. So I'm allowed to subjectively assess my program approach. And the second reason why machines helped with my competition prep, motivation. I love lifting weights. I love lifting barbells. There's not much more in the world that I want to do other than being in the gym and lifting weights. But even still, there are times when I was slow to get under the bar. And some days a machine just seemed easier to get under and push myself. It seemed a little bit more inviting. I didn't have to mentally wrestle with myself to get under the bar. And when two or three of my five weekly training sessions was machine based, it left a lot of motivation in the tank for my event days. I started really looking forward to my event days. And I can honestly only think of one day, actually it was just log press, so just one exercise in my entire competition breath that didn't go great. Everything else felt good. I left the gym after my event days and even after my machine based days, feeling confident, strong, and looking forward to the next week of training. Whereas before I had this emotional connection with squats and deadlifts. Oh, you know, I think I should have squatted more. Or, I used to squat this. My deadlift's not improving as much as it should be. And so I would get worried about that. Whereas a machine, I didn't care what weight was on the machine. I just tried really hard and pushed myself. And however much weight I had on the machine, if I'm doing a 60 second max rep set, I don't care if I get 31 reps or 40 reps or 35 reps from week to week. It doesn't really matter to me. But I do have this numerical connection to squats to say, oh, it was only 295 when it should have been 315 and so on. And prior to this and other competition preps, I found myself having to get hyped for squats and deadlifts and barbell strict press and barbell push press and tire flips and yoke walk and atlas stone loads and log press. So replacing some of those compound movements that were not in the competition left this perfect balance for me in competition prep. That's it. Thanks for watching. Don't be so stubborn about certain exercises. If something tickles your fancy, do it. Always remember, tread on time.